Well, good evening, Hope family, our Hope community. To all of you all out there, I am Pastor Willie Nelson, um, and I am here um, with my Hope Fellowship family. For those of you who don't know, I serve as the executive uh, administrator for Pastor JP. And so it is a joy to be on this side of the camera with you all. Normally, I'm behind the scenes making it happen, but we're going to do that. So I'm excited. Hopefully, y'all can hear me well. Send some hearts, some thumbs up. Let me know that, that, that you hear me. And hopefully, you all, um, as you tune in, will be sharing this because we're going to have some great information, some great panelists um, that are going to talk about the holiday blues. And so we're going to get started in just a moment. I need you all to share this. Text someone. Uh, we know that 2020 has been an incredibly challenging year um, for most of us um, across the globe. And so we have some experts, um, panelists who are going to help us with some strategies and just ways that we can go about uh, getting through this season. Um, as I always tell people, the holidays aren't always the happiest of times um, for people. There's a lot of memories that go on, a lot of things that we're going through. Um, and so the whole, you know, I was watching Jingle Jingle the other night and just uh, even in that story, as we've heard so many stories, of just the one uh, time of year that we say it's the most happiest time. With, with, it's, the, it's the most wonderful time of the year. And for many people, it's not that wonderful, right? They shut down and it's like, I don't want to be bothered. And we have that, what, by humbug, right? So we're going to talk about that. And so, again, for everyone on, um, hopefully y'all can hear me. You can hear me. You can hear me. Let me make sure I turn up. And so for those of you all uh, who are joining, make sure that you are fair as we talk about this today. Turn volume up. All right. So is that better? Is that better? Y'all let me know if that's better. Is that better? Check one, two, one, two. All right. So we'll get started and hopefully um, I'll work this sound out in between. That's the thing when you're on camera and you're producing, you got to get together. So, all right, but let's pray. God, we thank you. We honor you for this time that we've gathered. Oh God, we thank you for every person of the sound of my voice, even now, and those that will watch later, for those who will join, uh, for those who are just looking for some hope during these holidays, oh God, we thank you um, that you will give us strength, even as we endeavor to uh, to spread the good news of Christ, that someone indeed will be challenged today, that someone will be uplifted, someone will be encouraged, someone will go um, and, and have a smile knowing that they are not alone in this journey called life. And so we thank you for this platform for Hope Fellowship, oh God, for Pastor JP and Bishop Triplett and everyone in their respective places who allow us to have these uh, conversations, oh God. And we thank you that you are yet with us. And for that, we praise you. We thank you that no matter what we face, that you are indeed with us. And that's good news tonight. And so we thank you uh, for what will transpire even tonight and in the days to come because of the ministry that goes forth tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So y'all still can't hear me. I need to figure that out. So while we're doing that, hopefully y'all can hear me enough um, that um, that I can introduce these panelists and we'll get started. Then I'll try to do some adjusting. But I'm excited to have with us tonight um, a good friend of Hope Fellowship and member. You all have seen her before. And so we're happy to have her back um, tonight. Her name is Janet Bordermaid, and she is a licensed marriage family therapist in the Daytona Beach um, area. Uh, and so we're happy to have her on uh, tons of experience and knowledge and so we welcome you Janet good to see you once again yes thank you thank you for inviting me absolutely it's, it's good, so good to be to here to and we have um, another dear friend of mine uh, Dr. Anita Green who is in Atlanta Georgia she is hailed as the grief doctor um, so you will understand what grief is she is the expert in that field and she's working um, and, and whether it's uh, funeral homes and hospice care and different things like that. And so she's also a member of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. Happy to throw that in there, my, my sorority <laughs> sister. But let's welcome her, Dr. Anita Green. Welcome. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> and so uh, thank you all again. I'm going to try to hook up my headsets and see if I can get better sound because I'm still coming in low. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if I can do this. This is the producer side. And so for those of you all who own, I want y'all to share. We're going to have this conversation. Can't hear you at all.
All right, nothing now. Hello? A little bit. It's slow. Yeah, very low. Oh, okay. Well, I cannot figure that out. So I may have to come, come out and come back in. Um, but we'll go ahead and let you all do the talking and hopefully y'all can be able to hear what they have to say. How about that? So um, during this season, we talked about the holidays coming. Um, we were just having a conversation. And for me, I was telling uh, Janet and Dr. Uh, Anita that um, holidays for me growing up were a time, all I can remember about Christmas in particular, Thanksgiving even, you know, my grandmother, my grandparents, it was always at their house. We always went to their house. My grandmother always cooked for Christmas like nobody cooked. It wasn't no potluck. Grandma cooked everything and everything was delicious. I even talking about it, I can still smell like going into her house and smelling like all the fragrances and all the cakes and pies. That's what the holidays were about, right? My grandmother has gone on to be with the Lord now for 14 years. And ever since that that time, um, it has not been the same for me. Um, the holidays is, is just, you know, it's no grandma house to go to anymore. It's not grandma cooking anymore. It's not, you know, the hot house that we would have and everybody, you know, fanning because she used to have the house so hot. And so for many people, we find um, whether it is the loss of a loved one, particularly now with COVID, uh, many persons who have seemingly overnight just gone from being well um, to, to transitioning has been tough for many people. Um, so I always say it's, it's not, um, it, it's a challenge to even find the joy, to find the hope of the holiday season. So hopefully y'all can hear me enough um, to, to, to say, you know, what can we do um, about the, these different losses that we've experienced during the holidays, that seasonal depression and things. And you can talk about that, um, even Janet, you know, we talk about just seasonal depression, the, the cold weather for those of us who are in sweaters right now and, and, and bundling up, you know, how can we go about that? Good evening, everybody coming on in. Make sure you share and share. All right, so Jan, help us out. Okay, so, you know, this year has really been unprecedented uh, because of the pandemic. You know, we, we deal with grief um, on a regular basis, but it has been amplified uh, because of the coronavirus. So a lot more people are experiencing um, these unexpected losses um, of people that they love, people who they once worked with, friends that they've had. And so it's taken a lot of people by surprise, people who, young people um, who aren't accustomed to dealing with with death are finding themselves really struggling with this idea of, of mortality. So it's it's really been a, a really been a uh, time of struggle. A lot more um, uh, people are dealing with with depression and grief and struggling with those those feelings. What to do with it? Um, you know, when when we if if we can kind of think of it as when the we lose somebody, what we're dealing with in our mind is this, this conflict between what our memory knows about the relationship with this person and the expectation of what it would be like in the future. There's this conflict because all of a sudden this person or people are gone. And so when you have this kind of, 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 of disconnect, it can create the, these feelings of loss and of loneliness. So part of it is being able to um, allow ourselves to experience and explore those feelings in a safe, non-judgmental way. Um, you know, I, I do a lot of mindfulness work with, with my clients, not specifically in grief, but it is very useful uh, for grief and being able to uh, teach a person to just notice what they're feeling, allowing it to be there, but um, not placing any judgments or expectations on it, not 
you know, allowing ourselves to be drawn into the memories of the past or the expectations of the future just to um, focus in the present and allow yourself to notice what you're feeling at that time. Um, I don't know, Dr. Anita, but I'm sure you have something to add to it with your expectation, your experience and expertise in grief. Hmm. Thank, thank you, um, um, Dr. Janet. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> but, but thank you. And, and you touched on it. One thing that we have to recognize is that, you know, we're grieving. We may not call it grief, but we know that we're, that these emotions are being weaved in and out of us all day long, every day. Number one, because we're going through this emotional roller coaster. Number one, you know, we're experiencing bereavement overload. And that means all these things that have us uh, dealing with loss or death, uh, it just keep piling on us. If we think about, you know, not in any necessary order, but if we think about, you know, this uh, coronavirus, our, our jobs, um, you know, our, our home, our relationships, even just finding our own voice in all this uncertainty, you know, is difficult. Um, and then on the emotional side, we're dealing with sadness, we're dealing with, you know, depression, we're dealing with darkness, we're dealing with, you know, anxiety. So we have these emotions that are all built up inside of us. And and I like that, you know, you, you titled this, you know, the dealing with the blues, because we are dealing with blues. If we think about you know, this state that we're in, you know, it's almost like, you know, trying to trying to dance through the rhythm and blues of of, of, of life or, or what's currently happening. Uh, you know, when we're uh, when we think about rhythm, you know, it's that syncopated, you know, uh, dance or syncopated pattern pattern that we're in. You know, we're moving to the beat we're you know, stepping, you know, to the to the sound. But when we're dealing with the blues, it's kind of like a slow, you know, movement where, you know, we're just in some kind of mood or feeling some kind of way. And so the blues kind of brings us into depression. Um, and so, you know, it, it, it's the holiday season. You know, we, we've lost people. We've lost some things. You know, we're ending out the year. You know, things in the political realm are happening. You know, churches are closed. Uh, you know, we're trying to find food to put on the table. You know, it, 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 it's, it's grief. We're just all grief. And we may not call it that, but we're feeling some kind of way. We are in a state of depression. We have the blues. And, and you know, for you, you I know your, your pastor, uh, 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 that, uh, Pastor McGee and, and you, um, Pastor Willie, you know, are into music. And so we know that uh, you know, that there's that, 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 you know, rhythmic movement, you know, when we're excited, when we're feeling good, you know, it's like there's a pep in our step, but when we're going through the blues, you know, it's like, oh, wow, you know, we, 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 we lost something. We, we're, uh, we're, we're pining away at something, you know, that is happening, you know, in our lives. And so, you know, I, I like this, you know, you know, holiday blues because that's what we're going through wow that that's so great thank you janet and uh dr nita for those of you who are joining us listen share this share this share we want somebody to be encouraged to be blessed by this um this is a safe space we're going to ask for your questions and answers um if you want you can um you can also email i said we can't do info i, don't, I won't be able to get that um uh, but listen, tell a friend to put, put your questions there, but we want to answer your questions and have some good conversation with you all. So keep sharing. So um, you hit on something there. Um, I, I Well, both of y'all, Janet, you said, um, and I got from that being aware of how we're feeling. Mm -hmm. That's one thing And mm -hmm. I am an advocate and I, I've shared this with probably anybody who's known me any amount of time. I am an advocate of therapy with a licensed clinical person, not your best friend, not your, you know, not somebody who is, is smart, but somebody who is trained 
to be able to handle and help me process, mm -hmm. not give me the answers, not give me the solutions, mm -hmm. but help me, empower me to, to, um, and you can put it clinically, Jen, you know, but, but to sort through what I'm feeling, because mm -hmm. sometimes you hear it, Dr. Nita, I, I'm just, I first, I'm just blocked. I'm tired. You know, I, I hear people say that and I'm like, well, say more. What do you mean? You know, because for mm -hmm. some people, they, I've had to say, well, I'm tired of living. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's let's talk. Let's 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 talk about this and let's get you to some somebody who can help. So what are those signs sometimes for those persons um, who may not be able to name, it, you know, um, or who have children who have a spouse, you know, spouse is becoming distant. And, you know, just, you know, I know and I'll share even with my dad, when my grandmother died, you know, I noticed a change in him. We've had several persons and we talk about family systems that have been disrupted by even COVID and just, you know, I tell people mm -hmm. beyond COVID, we got cancer. Um, an actress today who was 53, who died again of colon cancer, you know, so different people leaving, you know, how can we recognize those signs that something isn't like that, something is all, and how do we, when do we, it's two parts. So what do we, how do we know those signs of ourselves or people around us? And then how do we know when we should seek um, help? beyond what maybe even looking at church service would be. I think one of the things you 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 want to look at is is you, you touched on it. You a change in a person's mood. You know, extreme sadness. Okay. Um if there's a, a if you, if you notice that someone is um angry, okay, anger is a, a really strong clue it, you may have someone that all of a sudden they're just angry and frustrated for no reason at all. It's like everything seems to bother them. Um, hopelessness, a sense of hopelessness, like why should I even bother? Um, uh, change in their sleep pattern. Okay, noticeable change in, in, in sleep habits is another one. Uh, change in diet, you know, e uh, eating more or eating less either way you know it's 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 a way of them trying to to cope with whatever they're dealing with okay also um physical pain is 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 another uh symptom of depression physical pain actually feeling physical pain yeah wow. okay um anxiety is is another one um, and there, there, there are several others that you need to pay attention to. Um, you know, in children, you, you may see uh, more aggressive behavior uh, with children, or you may notice withdrawing or sleeping a lot. Ch children will sleep a lot, which is a way to avoid to kind of check out. Um, so when you notice those things you 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 need to check in with them ask questions and and maybe even um uh, call a, a counselor or or a counseling agency to share with them uh what you're seeing and 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 get their um their input okay that's good Thank you. So mm -hmm. noticing those changes in behavior, our moods, mm -hmm. um, and you and you've been hit it with, with eating. I know part of people who know me, I, I gained a lot of weight um, over. I've never been, you know, thin, but I gained a lot of weight over the past few years. And what people didn't know was that I was battling depression. Mm -hmm. um, so not eating, which caused me to gain weight, sitting around, not wanting to do anything, not wanting to go out, you know, and for many people who may be watching or may watch later, um, and I, I'm very transparent now because of the work that I've done on myself, because I know that it can empower and encourage other people. Um, but if, as I explained to people who have had that feeling, you know, as you said, becoming aware, you know, I don't really want to socialize. And I, I mm -hmm. shared earlier with Dr. Nita, I'm a, I'm a total extrovert. I gain mm -hmm. energy being around people and being out. And I noticed when I started declining invitations to hang out, you know, oh, I don't feel like going anywhere. Mm -hmm. And I remember my mom called me on a Friday night. She's like, it's a Friday night and you're in the house? Like, are you okay? You know, and I was like, you know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, but just, it, it, and, and for, for her, she noticed 
you know, you, 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 your behavior has changed. And so I had to, like you said, it was at that point, I'm like, wow, I'm sinking. I feel it. And I need help. And it's okay, as I always say, it is okay not yeah. to be okay. Yeah. It's okay. Um, and mm-hmm. part of this safe space tonight, I want us to understand that, that this year has been a lot for many of us. And it's all right. If, you know, my anxiety with my workload, I got, I'm not going to show y'all my desk right now, but papers <laughs> everywhere. You know, my eyes get big when I talk and I feel like I'm on it. You know, my anxiety level, because I'm aware, you know, even my anxiety level goes up. So how mm-hmm. do we, so we, we can reach out to um, to a therapist or find places in our area, because we know we have people who watch from all over, um, but finding a mm-hmm. therapist, what other ways can we um, help people get through these emotions and moves? Well, um, one thing that I always like to encourage, and sometimes we may not do it, but if we, uh, you know, if, if we instill in ourselves to, you know, communicate and collaborate, uh, communicate to, uh, you know, even if we have to look in the mirror, you know, even if we have to talk to ourselves and it's all right. I do that sometimes, you know, we'll look in the mirror and have a conversation with myself uh, just so I can get it out. Um, so whatever I'm going through, I won't hold it in. Because we know when we hold things in, it just make you know it it it, it you know the internal things the diabetes the heart attack mm-hmm. the strokes you know if we hold in all that pain and and anxiety and anger um, so you know find someone to you know to talk to um, also you know collaborate know that you you can this journey you can't walk by yourself that you need someone you know to grab your hand or you grab hold of somebody's hand, you know, uh, and, and, and have them walk with you. And it's not always that somebody has to say something to you. It's just a matter of knowing that there's somebody by your side that will just walk with you. And it may be in silence, you know, you, you can talk all you want to. And if someone does that to us, it does not mean that we always have to come up with a solution, mm-hmm. but just know that there's somebody that will hear us out. Um, also going back to what you said earlier, um, um, you know, on the other spectrum of, of, of seeing the signs in people, when people do things excessively uh, as they're going through depression or going through, you know, grief, that, you know, if you know that, you know, uh, if they dress a certain way, you know, kind of casual or, you know, modest, but then all of a sudden you see them dressing a whole, you know, completely different than what they've done, you know, dressed before. If you see that, you know, someone is, you know, going out and buying a new car when you know that right now they can't afford it. If you know that somebody's, you know, just so they don't have to be lonely or be by themselves to go and get into relationships and to marry people just so they don't have to be by themselves. If they're going to all these places that they've never been to before, that's a sign as well. And so we must be diligent in listening to what people are saying, to hearing what you know people are saying, and to seeing with our eyes, you know what people, um, you know, are doing. That's good. That's good. And and Janet, I think she hit on something there. Um, but it's, it's a few things that come to mind. But when we talk about what we see, I tell people sometimes it's also what we don't see, you know, um, mm-hmm. or what we don't we hear what somebody's saying. But I call that, I forgot the book, but listening with the third ear. Yes. Said, you know, you're talking about this and talking about this, but you haven't talked about, you know, and I see some of my friends on who I know have lost parents in the last year, you know, um, and siblings. And so, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, I haven't heard you talk about that, but I know, you know, you're still in that process. Mm-hmm. And sometimes just simply asking Dr. you know, how can I be there for you? Sometimes mm-hmm. people need to know for those of you who are on the other side of receiving care, to just ask, you know, hey, I know this may be a, a, a tough time for you. You know, I'm just reaching out. I can't tell you this this year um, how just sending a text message or just call and say, hey, I know you're in New York and you talk about the isolation, you know, people who've been by themselves. Just doing those check-ins 
Mm-hmm. Um, just to say, hey, I'm here for you. You know, I, I said, you know, it, uh-huh. we talked about casting our cares upon um, him because he cares about us. You know, yes, God mm-hmm. cares about us. But we also have earthly friends and family who care about us as well. Um, and I think we talked about that earlier, Janet, just people who have been isolated and been alone, who don't have spouses or significant others or mm-hmm. even close family. How do we get through those periods of isolation and loneliness? You know, if if nothing else, um, this pandemic has opened us up to new ways to communicate. Um, You know, staying in touch with someone typically would be, you know, stopping by their house, you know, or visiting them at their job or giving them a a phone call. Um, But because of the pandemic, uh, those face to face types of, of, of contact have been discouraged. And so we've had to be creative and find other ways to to communicate with people. Um, you know, things like texting, that, that's been around for a while, okay? Phone calls are, are, are still important. But, um, you know, with iPhones, we have FaceTime, um, we have Zoom. You know, this past Thanksgiving, my, my family, because of the pandemic, I wasn't able to to go home for Thanksgiving like I usually like to. Mm-hmm. But thank goodness we had an IT in the family who said, well, hey, we're, he sent out a link for everyone and we all came together on Zoom and some of us ate at that time. And actually in some ways it was better because we got to see relatives who never get to come because they live so far away. Wow. So, you know, so not only were we able to to meet together, we also got to include more people. So, you know, for people who are a little um, uncomfortable with technology, just allowing ourselves to be open to see what else we can experience with it can be helpful. Um, you know, and... I, I think it's important too to kind of differentiate between when we talk about being in isolation and being by yourself, I, I think we need to kind of make some clarifications between okay. being alone and being lonely. Yes, you know, say more. Yeah. Just just, you know, yes, we are in isolation, but that doesn't necessarily mean equate with lonely. Okay. We could be alone and some of us are fine with being alone. It's okay to be by yourself. In fact, it's good to be by yourself. The Bible is replete with examples where we have to take time to ourselves. Jesus, you know, got away from the crowds and went into the wilderness to commune with God. Mm-hmm. So it, it, we, there are times that we need to be by ourselves. Mm-hmm. That's not the same as being lonely. Being lonely is 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 when you are longing for the company of another mm. living, breathing being. Okay, so um, when a person is isolated, check in. See, well, what are you? Are you are you lonely, or just are you alone? And maybe being alone is not something you're comfortable with, but you can explore that. Well, what is this this new experience of being alone? Well, for one, there's not a whole lot of conflict with other people. When <laughs> you, okay. you can kind of do what you want to do when you're alone. If, if, if you want to clean your house, clean your house. If you don't, don't clean your house. If you want to cook, cook. If you don't, don't. You know, there, you, you have choices or you have a lot more choices to do what you want to do when you're alone. OK, so if it's if it's just getting accustomed to being by yourself, kind of look around and say, well, what are some things I've always wanted to do? And That's good. I've never been able to do because I've always been around other people, right. you know, explore new hobbies, 
you know, new activities. Maybe you could put, you know, a puzzle together. Maybe you could do some project in your house you've always wanted to do. Okay. Now, if yeah. you're lonely, okay, that's when you you have the opportunity to um, explore different kinds of connections. Mm. Um, to to reach out to someone to make a to make a phone call to someone or to write you know write a letter that that's been a lost art or to write a text or an email to someone okay um, if you're not able if if for some reason you're not able to reach out to someone via Zoom text message FaceTime oh what are some of the others. Um, Skype, WhatsApp, Skype. Oh, oh, WhatsApp, Facebook WhatsApp. Messenger. Yeah. <laughs> oh my I God, all, there's right? just so many. Yeah, there's just so many. So if there's a reason that you can't do that, spend some time writing, doing something artistic, putting words down on paper. You said something, uh, you, you and Dr. Anita were talking about something earlier that I want to touch on is, is um, you know, these emotions, these feelings that we have, mm -hmm. you know, uh, emotion is an express, is a feeling that depression, all of our feelings, they require expression, right. okay? All emotion right. requires yes. expression, okay? And, and, and we need to find a way to express how we're feeling because when we, allow when we don't allow those feelings to come out in the way that we choose it finds a way to come out another way and dr anita you alluded to that you know that we end up with conditions health conditions mm -hmm. like diabetes mm -hmm. or or heart disease mm -hmm. or certain mm -hmm. aches and pains right you know or high blood pressure because we're holding all of this stress, this anger, this grief, we're holding it inside. Emotion requires expression. Mm -hmm. So if you don't get it out in the way that you choose, it'll find a way out on its own. Wow. Mm -hmm. And that's not, and it's often a way that is not, that doesn't serve us well. Right. So if you're dealing with, with loneliness, give it voice, give it expression. Just like Dr. Anita said, if you need to talk to yourself, talk to yourself. You know, you could journal, you can mm -hmm. write, mm -hmm. you know, um, you could sing, you could write poetry, you can rap. One of the things I, I really admire about hip hop artists and rap artists is that they use um, their art through yes. music to get out what they feel. You know, people say, you you know, rap, art, rap music oh, is really dark and it's violent, but it's their way of expressing their experience and they're getting it out because yeah. it's better out than in. Right. So we can do that too. You know, when you're dealing with loneliness, get it out, write it down. And, 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 and one technique I, I like to use that I, I share with my uh, clients is that when you are, especially with music, um, when you're feeling down and you're feeling low, I think most of us can probably find a song that um, we can match to that emotion. You know, when, 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 we're, when we're feeling the blues, we can find, probably find a bluesy song that matches how we feel. Right. And so what I suggest to my clients is that you find a song that matches how you feel. Mm. And then you find another song that generally makes you feel really, really happy. And then you find about three songs that will take you from being this bluesy state to feeling less blue, to feeling okay, to feeling a little bit better, and then to this final song. Wow. And a make playlist. a playlist. Yeah. And when you're feeling blue, go ahead and play that playlist and do what you normally do around your house or at your job or wherever you have, if you have a headset. 
And what our bodies do, or since music is a reflection of what's happening internally, if we're just doing what we're doing and we're playing this playlist, what you'll find is that your body will respond in kind. And you can actually move yourself out of this, this, this bluesy state and find yourself feeling more upbeat by the time you get to that fifth song. Mm -hmm. Just by playing that playlist in the background while you're doing what you do, mm -hmm. you know. So mm -hmm. it's a matter of, of getting it out and creating change along the way. Mm -hmm. That's so good. It's and so it, much in it, it. So much in it. And Dr. D, she's like, let me jump in, jump in. Go ahead. <laughs> and, you know, and um, something that I that I do, I, everybody loves to take pictures. Everybody loves selfies. And I, I know I do. <laughs> um, a lot of people do. Some people hate them. <laughs> and, and you don't have to send them off to anybody, but but you know, as you're going through that stage, you know, take a take a, a a selfie, and then when you get to that next song that's bringing you up out, you oh, know, wow. take a take another selfie. You know, it might be a little smile. Then that next song, it's like you might you know take a a, a video of you dancing around the house or dance wherever you are. So like you said, it's all about the mm -hmm. expression. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and when I tell people when they're journaling, you know, if you journal to, to start, you know, putting down how you feel, what you're going through. And then by the time you get to day number 25, day number 30, you may see that your journal language is now a lot different than what it was in the very beginning. Your words might be harsh. Your words might be angry. Your words, you know, uh, you, you may have a page where it's just a big X because you're just angry about everything. But as you go through and you write down your feelings, you write down, you know, what's going on in that situation, that as you get to day 25, day 30, wherever, that you'll see that your journal language is now beginning to change and mm. you're coming up out of that darkness coming up out of that depression you know your your, your selfie pictures are getting better um mm. like you say your music you know your playlist is getting happier so yeah mm -hmm. because you're giving voice you're getting what's in there out yes yes right. So one of the things, and, and hopefully y'all can hear me better. I think I figured out the mic situation. Um, <laughs> glory to God. But that was um, like one of the things, Dr. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Willie Godman um, at the ITC, um, I'll never forget that session. He said, uh, if you don't deal with your emotions and if you don't deal with your issues, they will deal with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I saw Elder Janine Small has been commenting on here. And she said, if you don't let it out, it'll find its way out on, on its own. That's right. You know, yeah. when we start, you know, I, I, I have been that way. For those of you who know, I work in various capacities and different church. And I can feel myself when I start snapping on people, getting a little tested. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's not you. Like, what's going on? And I literally have to, because I'm aware, again, I post like, what is going on? You know what? And, and then I start saying things like, well, I'm just tired. Okay. What's prompting this? Time? Is it just that you need to rest or are there some things going on that you're not dealing with um, mm -hmm. that that is now manifesting itself as anger, as frustration, you know, and then we slip because we're not, you know, and we spiral. And I'm going to use that word because we go so long without attending to ourselves. And so it is important as we talk about this holiday blues time. And I, I mentioned, you know, seasonal depression and those things, you know, even if you can't name it, if you feel yourself, um, as Dr. Anita said, a certain type of way, you feel some kind of way, you know, to to institute and implement some type of healthy self-care to take care of yourself. Um, and Elder Small, I mean, she's been on here and she says self-care has been instrument, uh, instrumental for me. Right. The beginning of this pandemic. Again, I'm an extrovert. I like to be out and about around people. COVID-19 says, I, I, <laughs> no, you can't be around. Right. So now one thing's because I'm not a homebody by nature. So there was a little park up the street that I started every day. I would just go take the dog. I would just go walking, end up jogging. I need to lose some weight anyway. So guess what? It worked out for me. And then I found that that was a, a, a great mechanism. I would start every morning like, and, and this is what we had to understand about exercising. I'm not a fitness guru. 
I don't even like working out. Let me put that out there. But what I found mm -hmm. was just getting the heart rate up, you know, and the blood circulating first thing in the morning, getting fresh air, all of that. It helps. And I'm not going to go through all the, the physio things that go on with the oxygen levels that come up that all have an effect on our mood. Right. Yes, so does. that was one thing. And now I'm doing boot camp and I'm which has music. So I'm 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 working out to the music and all that. But I found that that's been a healthy coping mechanism for me, as well as. I'd like Dr. Danita, you, I'm around here. I posted, I started listening to Christmas music before Thanksgiving because <laughs> I like, I, you know, I actually like Christmas music, you know, so I was around there, my little Charlie Brand, do, 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 you know, and I felt my mood list, um, lifting, you know. So for those of you all who out there, let me, let me ask you all, and we can talk about that. What are some healthy ways that we cope? What are some things? I know cooking. I like to cook. You know, and so that was one of the things that I had gotten away from. But since I've had this time, like now I'm feeling a certain way. You know what? Let me go cook one of my favorites. Let me see if I can if I can put some turkey wings in the oven. You know, I started baking. I hadn't baked cakes in years. You know, I started. Let me see if I can bake. Let me experiment. Mm -hmm. And what did Dr. Uh, what Janice said? Let me explore. You know, right. so what are some ways you all who are who are out there? And maybe what are some healthy ways that you found that you cope? Anybody, Elder Janine says she loves to color, coloring books, yeah. word puzzles. Come yeah. on, y'all. I know y'all up there. What, what, else mm -hmm. do you, what else do you do? What else do you do? Do you all have any healthy ways that you cope that you can share with people? I'm, I, I like to cook. I, I, li I like to cook, and I'm, um, you know, I'm a, somewhat of a vegan, so I like to explore uh -huh. with new vegan type of recipes. Um, that's always been a, a big one for me. Wow. I've enjoyed. All right. We got um, Minister Trainer Denise Anderson. She said drawing. And then uh, Minister Tangela Mill said walking and drawing. We got a lot of artists on here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Good. What about you, Dr. Nita? What are some healthy ways that you cope? Um, I just started um, water aerobics. I love it. Uh, <laughs> water aerobics. And, and like you trying to stay healthy. Um, mm -hmm. but I started doing water aerobics twice a week. Um, word search puzzle books. I, I think I have one in every room in my house. So that you know, I I try to intentionally every night to do like five words, you know, on, on each puzzle intentionally. Um uh, and you know, of course, you know, first thing in the morning, walking the dog, um, you know, getting exercise. So, you know, that's what I do. Um, you know, now I'm, I'm happy to come to your house so somebody can teach me, you know, how to experiment with <laughs> baking and stuff like that. Um, but, but, but yeah, so that's what I do. And, and, you know, I enjoy it. Good. All right. So I think, yep. Yeah. So minister, uh, 10, I could put them up here. Look, let me, I'm trying to do, y'all see my eyes going, I'm looking at different parts of the screen, but uh, like I said, coloring, drawing, walking and drawing. And then Minister Tangela Mills said, play in the kitchen by trying to cook. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I hope that Nisei Sykes, maybe, love cooking and listening to music. Thanks for joining us. And then Elder Small said, I'm a bookworm, too. So she likes to read. Yeah. And yeah. then she has that bundle of joy. Um Indeed, PJ running around. She has a one-year-old now, so I am sure your life is exciting in many ways. Um, <laughs> one of the, um, when I was um, doing my chaplaincy residency um, at Grady, and we had to do this, um, I forgot what we called it, but anyway, um, I was sitting in a room full of people, and they asked me, what do you do for self-care? And the first thing I said was, I like to read because I do. And, you know, everybody's face kind of like, look like, but you read for class. You know, you, you read you're in seminary, you read, you know, we're going to ask you again. And they literally said, we're going to ask you again. What do you like to do? And I could not figure anything out. Um, and so a couple of years ago, I had um, was diagnosed in the hospital for about a week with pneumonia. Didn't know I had it, but but you know, and it could have gone. You know, the doctor said, mm -hmm. you know, I hate to say this, but the doctor said it could have gone either way. Mm -hmm. And 
I, you know, had people praying for me, you know, felt much better, went home. And I determined at that day that I was going to come up with a bucket list so that I can take things off of my list, you know, try to do it, you know, quarterly, every other month, something. And so create yourself a bucket list. Reading is fine, um, but, but we read something every day. Um, you know, still read, but find something creative, you know, on your bucket list. I during the summer when it's nice outside, I do goat yoga. I love it. You know, little baby wow. goat walking all on you. Um, <laughs> you, you know, I, I said I wanted to go rock climbing. Can I, you know, I, I need to find a place to go do that, but create a, a, a creative bucket list. And, um, you know, and that's part of yourself. I like that. Mm -hmm. That's really I, I, good. I like that. I like that. Mm -hmm. Be creative. Be creative. Find, and, and in this exploration, y'all, we're talking about holiday blues and how to cope, how things to do. Use this time to even explore what your passions may be. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes even relinquishing control. Um, I know for those of us, and I'm saying I'm putting myself who who battle with anxiety, um, wanting to control certain things. I've learned to just, as as we said in real estate, um, lean in and roll with the punches. Hmm. You know, life as we know it has changed. You know, and so for me, it is now okay. Not so much as what I I can't do, but what can I do? You know, so even at the house, organizing a closet, um, Pastor JP, for those who've been connected to Hope, did a, a sermon series and we talked about removing the junk and the access and all of that. You know, going through your closet, I laughed at some of the stuff. I'm like, how in the world could I fit this just a few years ago? <laughs> Throw it out. I ain't going back. I ain't going to be that skinny. You know, but organize, uh, changing the furniture. You know, I remember years ago, if, if if it's just sometimes just your very environment, y'all, if I can just move this couch and paint, you know, you can get a gallon of paint um, from Lowe's Home Depot somewhere, paint a wall a different color. You know, it don't have to be something expensive or fancy. You know, I actually just got um, some little decoration things to go on the mantle piece. They were $5 a piece. I'm like, oh, I like that color. You know, I actually I'm a guy, but I actually like fresh cut flowers. I found out. I started going to get flowers, putting on the table each week. You know, that was just something I, I came in. Huh. They still look good. You know, so when you talk about um, being creative and I see somebody, oh, thanks for having me. Yes. Thanks for joining us. Do it yourself products. Minister Janine said do it yourself um, projects are her favorite. So um, cleaning, organizing, redecorating. Um, we talked about journaling. Um, another creative thing. Oh, no. And I didn't. Um, I'll, I'll say this for those who are joining us, when things get tough, when they get challenging, and I'm sure both of you all can attest, mm -hmm. deep breathing. Yes. Deep breathing. Right. Yeah. We all can do that right now. That, oh, it, when I feel myself getting worked up, when I feel myself get just, I mean, it, it is just to take that moment. Come on, can y'all can y'all practice that? I feel like my preacher time coming. Can y'all practice that with me? <laughs> but literally, just take that moment and just take a deep breath. And I said, breathe in through your nose and breathe out through your mouth. Just release slowly. I can feel my shoulders sometimes just relaxing, relaxing. And if you put on that music or some slow music, I listen to sleep music. Um, meditation music with no words, just soothing sounds. Um, and I even take, I even take, uh, well, because I'm working out, I take Epsom salt baths. <laughs> okay. But you know, and I listen to music. I Let me tell y'all something. Where's my phone? This thing, sometimes for some of us, we need to connect. And I'll say for some of us, we need to disconnect. Disconnect. Mm. Yeah. That just hit me. As, as we're dealing with the holiday blues, I've had to, there are times when I've gotten on social media and all of I've seen, as soon as I get on, please pray for my mom. She's in surgery. Please pray for this person. R-I-P, R-I-H. 
you know, and it's like, you know what? And I would immediately, you know what? I'm aware where I am right now. I can't even, it's, it's sensory overload. So for mm -hmm. some of us, taking care of ourselves may be disconnecting yes. for a bit. Dr. Teals yeah. is my new best friend. Elder Small knows something about that. That Dr. Teals, that's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for those, for those folks. But yeah, but for some of us, we need to just take a break from what we found to be norm. Mm -hmm. And be aware of where we are. Say, so you know what? What triggered, and we can talk about that. I know we limited limited on time, but even understand what our triggers are. You know, there may be some, I, I told um, um, Janet earlier, the holidays for me, because my birthday is January 3rd, right after the holidays. So like kind of Christmas, my birthday is just one big celebratory time, right? My grandmother would always bake me a chocolate cake around the holidays for my birthday. And it was, she died in 2004. I think the first time I had chocolate cake since her death. And my, mind you, she used to cook it every year for my birthday. The first time I had chocolate cake, I was in CPE. It probably was 2014, matter of fact, was the first time that I had chocolate cake since my grandmother's death. Wow. Talk about grieving. And I didn't even realize it. But I'm like, wow, I used to have chocolate cake every year. And ever since she died, I never had it. I haven't it. done it. And, 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 and I'm, I'm curious, did you notice the experience you had when you had that chocolate cake? I cried. <laughs> mm -hmm. I cried. And for those of you who are watching, talk about healthy ways, where we talked about not dealing with those emotions. And I'm not going to talk about her too much because I start tearing up now. And it's been, what's that, 16 years. But I tip if Jesus in the garden gets if Jesus was crying and saying, I don't want to have to go through this for all of you all who are dealing with life, who are dealing with death, dealing with loss, dealing with even suffering through this season. It is OK to sometimes cry. That's what that my emotions, the outward expression. I just and sometimes it's I'll, I'll end up I'll, I'll be crying because I'm sad one minute. And then as I think about something crazy, my grandma would say, I'll laugh, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and the memories that we have of our loved ones, you know, even to write, write them down. You know, um, I look through pictures sometimes. And like I said, it go, I go from laughing to crying, crying again, you know, because I do miss I miss my those who have gone on. And I miss even those who are here who are away. I'm in Atlanta. My family is all in Virginia. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, and I want to mention something about um, what you said about writing down those those memories that that's a wonderful thing to do because when we when we lose someone and we're grieving we're, we're grieving their loss we're grieving um, the the their dying story we're, we're, we're grieving the loss as as uh, one of the ways to be able to, to begin that transition is to start remembering their living stories. Mm. What, what, are, what are the things that you remember that made you smile? What are the memories that you had that made them who they are? Good, bad, or indifferent. You know, <laughs> we all have someone who we lost and we can remember all the good things, but sometimes there are some things that are not so good. But that's that's what made them who they were and, and why we love them so much. So to be able to start to to record and recall those living stories of a person to help make that transition from remembering their dying story and, and shifting to their living story. That's good. Mm, I like that. Mm -hmm. That's good. Good. Well, we are almost at an hour. Um, and so we have any any parting words. If you have any questions um, before we close out, please let us know. Um, Deacon Shropshire said, I haven't had tea cakes for Christmas since my dad died. And I'm going to make tea cakes and cry and eat tea, <laughs> tea cakes and cry. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm laughing at it. But but I hope you know the spirit. As you've heard my story, I can resonate. And I, I'm praying for all of you all who have lost loved ones that you have those memories. And indeed, that is OK. Invite me to share to Sharon is caring. Yes. Come on. Up. <laughs> Thank you.
But if you have any questions, any last minute questions, um, thank you. I'm, I'm grateful, um, um, Denise. So listen, it, it, it has been a challenging year, um, but hopefully as you explore, as Janice said, you've heard, it's okay to explore those emotions, those feelings. You've heard Pastor Willie say it's okay not to be okay. Um, and I'm, I'm going to say this as the pastor, what is not okay is, and I'm, I'm probably, but, but, but to, to not reach out when you're feeling some kind of way or um, to let someone know you're not by yourself. I'm talking to you, my brother, my sister, wherever you are. We're going to put um, Janice information and, and Dr. Anita's information. Um, you can email me, my email, I'll, I'll put it up, but reach out. Know that there are people who care about you, no matter what walk of life you've come from, no matter what you've done, no matter what you've said, we all have our faults and we've fallen short of the glory of God. But we serve a God of restoration, of healing, of wholeness. And so, you know, even we didn't even talk about this, but if even if you are estranged from your family, you know, I believe that God is going to be reconciling families in relationships in this season. Um because life is short. We have no other time. We've said that we understand that it is a, as a vapor. Um, yes, and so, is. so you don't have to be by yourselves. Know that we care about you. That's why we're doing this today. Yeah. It's okay to cry. And, and Dr. Nita, the grief doctor, we, we haven't even talked about the grief cycles. Um, but in, in, in one minute, can you just even talk about for those who have lost loved ones that in, in, a little bit of, of even what that may look like who are not understanding what they're feeling. Um, in, in the grief cycle, um, we're basically looking at those stages of grief that we go through, the anger, uh, I mean, the denial, the anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance uh, that also goes with feeling numb, uh, feeling lost. But what happens is as we name them, you know, those might be the steps that and stages that we go through, but we, as we all grieve differently because we are different people, that we may go from denial to bargaining. We may go back to denial and then go to age. We may start out with anger and then go to the state of depression. But just remember that this this whole thing, this, everything that we're going through right now since COVID started is an adjustment. Yeah. We're trying to make you know the, these new adjustments of how life is being done, of, of how we're doing family, how we're doing friends, how we're doing work, how we're doing ourselves, how we're just, you know, doing all aspects of our life, that it is a big adjustment. Even the way, you know, I'm gonna throw this in, even the way that we do funerals and mourn, wow. you know, the loss of someone mm -hmm. is an adjustment. You know, having an RSVP, when have we had to RSVP to go to someone's funeral? Wow. You know. Having to sit, we are a people that, 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 you know, we like the physical touch, you know, when we're, we're, we're grieving, we're crying, you know, what do we do? The first thing we do is to touch someone is to rub their back is to, you know, say mm -hmm. that I'm here, you know, with you, I'm here for you. We can't even do that. Why? Because we wow. can't touch God because we have to stay yeah. six feet apart. Yeah. You know, what, what about, you know, uh, as soon as we find out that someone passes away, we go to the house. We take food yeah. after the service. We have a repast. We can't even do that anymore. So this whole thing has has caused us to make a big adjustment in every aspect of our lives. Wow. So as you're going through these stages, you know, we may not know that we're going through these stages of grief, but uh, but but we just know that our emotions are running all over the place. But one thing that we do, like we said, is to, you know, find a moment to breathe, breathe, you know, breathe, communicate, collaborate and know that you don't have to go on this journey by yourself and uh, be intentional about encouraging yourself as well. Wow. Well, I, I tell you, I have the uh, the prayer email. If you have prayer requests, <clears throat> know that uh, Hope Fellowship is praying for you. I am praying for all of you all throughout this holiday season. <clears throat> Excuse me. But thank you, um, Janet Bordenade. And tell us where we can find you. If they have any questions, people want to email you. How can we get in touch with you? 
Um, you can call me, area code 386-530-6338. Uh, I can be reached by email at Janet at artunbreaks.com. Um, and um, always, you can always reach me through Hope Fellowship. Also. That's right. Yes. Does that look right? All right. So we put yes. that up there if you want to get, she's a licensed marriage family therapist. Do you have any openings? Yes, I do. Actually. Okay. Because a lot of yeah. therapists are booked up right now, which I think. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. You know what? It, uh, this is typically a slow time. In, okay. in therapy, but not this year. Yeah, mm-hmm. we the offices are are packed. Wow, um, with people are hurting. Yeah. Um, you know, it's gotten worse as we've gotten closer to the holidays. Um, so yeah, we're we're pretty busy, but yeah, I do have openings. Good. So, All right, and Doctor Doctor Anita, mm-hmm. what about you? How can they get in touch with you? Um, my phone number is four zero four. Seven one three four seven three six, and my email is uh well I'll give out this I'll give out my regular is um R E V like short for Reverend R E V dot Anita Green A N I T A G R E E N at gmail dot com. All right. So that's Dr. Anita Green. Oh, I got to put it up. Huh? All right. Try to do. All right. So that looks right. Yeah. All right. So we got the information there. So two people you can reach out to. Again, I'm Willie Nelson, the third. Y'all can reach me. Just inbox. Uh, yeah, y'all can reach me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but thank you all so much again um, for joining you. us. Thank y'all. And I pray that uh, everyone you. has been blessed by what has gone forth. Um, join me tomorrow morning with Pastor JP at 6 30 a.m. as I lead um, in a time of intercession, prayer, and impartation. So um, I'm feeling this whole cast our cares um, in my spirit. So we'll see what comes by the morning. So join us at 6 30 a.m. on Tuesday and Thursday. And um, you can join Hope Fellowship on Sundays at 10 30 a.m. And not sure of anything else that I need to announce, but stay tuned to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, all of that, um, and find out what's going on. All right. So thank you all again for joining us. And uh, we'll bow for a word of prayer. And uh, remember to keep sharing this. All right. Live and be well. So, God, we thank you indeed for this time that we've been able to share. Oh, God, we pray now for all of those who are um, battling the holiday blues. Oh, God, whether it be um, just challenging times. Oh, God, the loss, the grief of loved ones, of of even job changes and financial changes. Oh, God, we thank you that you remain the same, that you are indeed still our rock, our strength, our provider. Thank you that you're still a healer. Oh, God, that you're able to touch our minds even, oh, God, when we um, are feeling the weight of just life and the burdens and trials that you said that we would have, oh, God. But we thank you that we can always go to you, oh, God, and indeed that you will continue to allow us to breathe. Thank you, Lord, that you allow us to simply pause sometimes in all the chaos of the world and just to center ourselves on you to be grateful for all that you're doing. Thank you for um, these facilitators tonight. Oh, God, continue to bless them and their ministry and the work that they do. Thank you for placing people among the earth that care about us and that we're able to talk to, oh, God, and help us process this thing called life. Thank you, Lord, for all you're doing. Continue to bless those who are watching and will watch. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank Thank you. you Okay. It's nice meeting you, Dr. Anita. You too. You have a good night, Willie. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Bye-bye.